And next for me to kind of uh, quickly cover, I think, uh, one of the series that was a little bit more hyped this or this time around, which is Yuri is my job. Um, Fire. So this you, is... It's not you can't have that job. You're not Yuri. <laughs> Uh, I apologize for being unless you identify, then by all means go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is a manga original. Um, this done by written by, I believe, uh, Miman. Miman is uh, so he he's done like some other. He's wrote some written some I think like small Yuri like do not dojins I guess dojin level stuff like very small stuff. Um, too big. I think this is his like first really big like hit manga series here. Uh, but yeah, it is Yuri is my job. Manga original made it into a, an anime adaptation. Uh, titles, alternative titles, Person in Liebe, uh, or Watashi no Yuri wa Oshikoto desu. Um, this is a, yeah, this is a um, Passione anime. Uh, so Passione is leading the, Passione. Yeah, Passione is leading the charge. So, for those of you who might not know, Passione doesn't have the best record. So recently they did Harem in the Labyrinth of Another World, as well as Rene Flops, neither of which were very good. Um, Speak for yourself, Spire. I see Miracle chan on here and yeah. Ishizoku Reviewers, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the, Ishi, oh, the, the great oh. series, Ishizoku Reviewers. Um, Citrus. They, they did... Citrus is there. Hey. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, they do have some bright spots. They did some of the recent Higurashi adaptations. They did Joshi Kosei no Murasugai. They did Citrus. Um, I think High Tide Nanafa was okay, too. But yeah, so they did, you know, Rail Wars and High Tide Nanafa as their debut wars. They are heading the animation production along with a lot of subcontractors under their belt. I think most of the subcontractors that you see left, listed in the credits as well as, you know, on the Anime News Network stuff are just one or two people that were hired from there. They kind of use a lot of the connections to collect a lot of people who both inside, um, who are both connected with Passione projects, previous Passione projects, as well as um, just, you know, various, you know, hiring various subcontractors with various experience. Most of them are a little bit on the newer side to intermediate um, level uh, people, but yeah. So, oh, and... Some of the 3D stuff is done by Studio Twinkle. I believe, again, the Studio Twinkle stuff is a couple of people who are heading up, you know, photography um, and 3D stuff. As you can see, the director of photography, Surugu, uh, Shiga Surugu, is contracted from Studio Twinkle. Studio Twinkle is mainly known for their photography work, I believe, photography assistance, photography work, photo yeah, photography work. But they did help with 3D and stuff like Mirai Nikki. Big Order, Batum, uh, Season 2 of To Your Eternity, stuff like that. So they did do some of that work. Yeah, they did uh, hire um, Suguru Shiga as director of photography from, from there, but he doesn't seem to be as experienced in... in um, so he seems to be a relative newcomer, so we'll, uh, it's, it's kind of a toss-up to see kind of how, how he'll form the rest of the anime. But yeah. That's just the studio stuff. Uh, director, he, uh, Sanpei Hijiri, he did mainly direct, episode director stuff for various studios. He's been, but he is, has been working with Passion since the Rail Wars days and involved with you know, most of their works from then on. He was also, yeah, he was also one of the main directors for Josh Kosei no Mudatsukai. And so this is his same, second main directorial role ever. And this time he's sort of the only top guy at the helm. With uh, just Kosin and with that guy, he, there was another sort of chief director above him. Uh, script by Hayashinaoki. He did work with Passione on Citrus and Higurashi Go and Sots along with Sanpei. So, he again, a lot of this Passione is hiring of the Higurashi people and some connections and a little bit of outside subcontractors. He also wrote the later episodes of Flip Flappers. So, that's a little bit interesting. Um, so, he, he's one of the better people, I think, at, at Passione. Um, which kind of uh, reflects in how the series goes, although obviously the source material is there as well. And yeah, most of the other people, like the chief animation stuff, the 3CG people, the, the music people, general combination of people who are co connected with Passione stuff, especially you know along the lines of Hikurashi and the interspecies reviewers teams, 
and some less experienced uh, people from other subcontractors and lines of work for as well for like storyboarding and episode direction. They did bring along uh, an older head for um, some music who worked on a few things like Yume Patissier, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, uh, Igloo, Okami Stun, stuff like that, um, character design, uh, Iwasaki Ta- Taisuke, who did, um, you know, uh, uh, did, did a pretty good job, I think. The, uh, he subcontracted from somewhere else, but he did quite a good job of mimicking the manga's visual while not necessarily losing quality. They, he kind of like softened, rounded out the lines a little bit, uh, but he did make it look a lot like the manga art style while again uh, not losing the quality so that's a plus for him here and they they uh for the sound director okay nana Uruske, they did manage to pull in a veteran who did work with uh passing on it from card so that's the general kind of thing um some veteran a couple of like one or two veterans plus the passiona connections uh carrying forward a couple of teams a couple of members who are holding together a team who are kind of half composed of slightly less experienced subcontractors. So a little bit of a ragtag bunch, but it does work. Um, Going over to the voice acting staff, voice acting cast, most of it's, you know, the kind of standard, I want to say, A, B listers, A, B, S listers uh, that you would see here and there. Who's the hottest Um, one on the group spire? You mean the fictional girls? No. What? Well, sure. You mean the you the real girls or the fictional girls? <laughs> what? Oh, we'll do both. Who's the hottest? What do you mean by girls? hot? Yes. Yeah, what? I don't. But you ask the question, Toast. What? Yeah. I, I am lost for words right now. Well, I, who's the hottest personally... of the main year of the group? I. I don't really like any of them, to be quite honest. Like Fire. they're not like they're you good characters, like, but like none of like them Sumika? are like wow. Um, because she has nah. glasses. Nah. All right. Bear hates mm. women, so. All right, then let's change it up. Yeah, Who's I the hate all of them. Let's change it up. Who's the hottest <laughs> voice actor of the crew? Because there's some really good. Voice I've always here. liked Ogreye myself. <laughs> I I've always had. She's I, I know I'm burying a very vanilla person, but I've always liked uh, Ogreye a lot. It's hard. I'm gonna use uh, a very, uh, uh, you know, it. Her. Me, I'm gonna say Yukari Tamara. For obvious Yukari reasons. Yukari Tamara is a very good choice. She too. voices uh, Nanaha. Yeah. I mean, and then some chicken here, I guess. All all the girls also like um like all like female otaku's like tend to like Yukari Tamara a lot too. Why? But... Because they're perverts. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. But anyways, um, standard, pretty good, uh, relatively solid lineup. You know, Wesek Sumire, Ogura Yui, Seto Asami, um, what is it, Tanaka Minami, Tamura Yukari, stuff like that. Oni Shiaguri are kind of like the n- named ones. And some of the other people, like, you know, um, uh, Koichi Makoto, I would say Sato Emiri, uh, Tamagai Hana, stuff like that, are all kind of like, they hired a lot of people for these unnamed roles that are kind of less prolific or less known. So they did a good job of hiring a lot of like the newer bloods here. Not newer bloods, but a lot of people who are not, you know, necessarily getting a lot of roles here and there. So good stuff. I will say just on note, uh, both Ogura Yui and Uesaka Sumire do a pretty good job of fitting into more, I want to say, standard voice roles. So for those of you who know these two voice actresses, Uesaka Sumire and Ogura Yui both have a very, very distinct tone their voice like you can tell even when they're actually voice acting so it's like like Wisica has a, like, a very like though like i can point out you can not from... really like there are so, there are some people like kitamura eddie who's just like very vanilla like you can just be like that or like um i, I want to say even somebody like kind of i right she has like a her regular voice but like when she's acting she like she can hide it very well but like for the longest time i want to say Wisica sumire had that sort of like ojo someone like eh, eh, like eh, kind of like lilt at the end of the voice and then like ogre yui has that like very whispery uh, like lolly falsetto like high tone like ah like kind of like that voice right but in but both voice actresses in this case i think managed to 
kind of settle that down, put, kind of shove their voice into a deeper and kind of more solid like register with like less breathy kind of nature. And Wilson Kasumire did her kind of Onesan voice very well without kind of sounding like her regular voice. And Ogura, you also fit into a kind of standard vanilla young girl voice without her super, again, high, whispery, falsetto-ish voice acting up. I, I, I don't want to say acting up, showing up, right? And so uh, I want to say props to both of them, although, again, it is kind of a pity that um, it is good that they're doing the actual voice acting because that's what they should be doing because they're voice actors. Or, But it's kind of like a pity that they're losing that like distinct vo- uh, voice tone, like quality, that made them so like attractive as like sellable, marketable voices in the first place. But yeah, I, I, I shouldn't be too greedy, right? But they, they, they did definitely a good job in this instance. Are you saying, Spire, that uh, it would have been better if like Marina Inoue or Ayane Sakura was in the series? <sighs> I, th- I mean, no. I think, I think these people did the good job. I, I, I'm just pointing out the fact that a lot of times with, uh, again, people like Ogura Yui, like before, or like it's like a sumire. It is very like sometimes voice actresses have or voice actors have a tone where it's just like so difficult to set them apart from um their real kind of persona, right? So it's like when you hear them voice acting a character, you're like, oh, that's just it's like a sumire, but in this character. You know what I mean? It, it's very hard to kind of like separate that. Um, but some voice actresses can kind of create these different voices very, very. Anyways, um, so that's like a general overview. I think opening ending, both um, the, sung by Ogura Yui, and then I think the ending was also sung with the like second Not that impressive. It was very standard, like vanilla kind of stuff. Um, nothing, nothing really to see here. Again, audiovisuals. Um, quite decent but it's not like there are a bunch of uh it's not like there are a shit ton of frames flying around like action scenes or whatever most of it was still with like um you know the mouth moving or whatever or sometimes even the mouth even the mouse like weren't like moving and it was just like the regular like stills of like the two girls just looking at it into each other's eyes like you know doing like the yuri kind of scenes right so there weren't that many frames, so I think they could have, you know, added a bit more money. So this was around what I expected with regards to the visuals, and I'm glad that it, they didn't disappoint. Going on to the story a little bit again, the story is just about the uh, girl here, Hime. Uh, sorry, Hime Shirasagi, who is the blonde short girl who usually kind of tries lives out life uh you know interacts with other people but it's like all facade right she tries to act cute by um she knows she's cute so she tries to act cute as a facade and like like charming to kind of uh get along with people and kind of get her own way and stuff like that um she has like one friend but most of the most of most other people she has like quote unquote relationships with or are acquaintances with she keeps up a facade she keeps them on arm's length and she just acts cute to again get her own way. She there's a couple like stumbles. She gets into she gets roped into working for this cosplay cafe, which is if you guys don't know, it's like a variant of the maid cafe, but instead of just being maids, they're acting out, they're cosplaying and acting out their like concepts. So in um like if you go to Akihabara, right, there will be like a ninja cafe. Maybe there will be like some sort of, you know, um, fucking Kaisho something era, whatever cafe or whatever it is. So you'll have these like different cosplays and they'll, um, and they will keep kind of, you know, in character and that's part of the cafe's value. So this is uh so she gets roped into the cosplay cafe and this cosplay is cafe's theme is about the yuri academy right so um 
it's a it's supposed to be the cosplay theme is about supposed to be about this like all girls academy and they kind of enact these kind of yuri kind of shoujo manga scenes um that wow the guests right that come in and all the waitresses are supposed to be part members quote unquote of this all girls academy and acting out these yuri scenes and blah 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 and so then with that set as the setting um the Hime, shirasaki hime having to work at this concept um cafe or at at this cosplay cafe the rest of the story just kind of becomes development of uh shirasaki hime along with the other um characters in the cast uh ayano koji mitsuki the um the tall i guess brunette brown haired girl that you see in in the poster art as well as the other characters in the cast in the cosplay cafe and so on and they all kind of have their own interactions and so on but the main two are supposed to be the main character in Shirasaki Hime, as well as um, the tall girl, again, the, her sort of the deuteragonist, not deuteragonist, but her kind of um, other, the other person she has to work with, with who is, again, Ayana Kojimitsuki, who, when they're working together in front of customers, she kind of it acts all like pleasant, blah, 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 stuff like that. But um, when she's in the back, when she's, you know, just with her coworkers and they're just normal people, she acts very crude and curt and uh, uh, kind of obtuse to her, uh, is very uh, acerbic to Hime. And Hime is afraid that she, uh, Mitsuki, might be seeing through her facade. And she, thinks she's a fraud and hence that's why she's being kind of cold to her. so that's sort of the interaction and again the rest of the series is um more or less like episodic but uh in between each episode there's inter-episode uh, character development and that inter-episode character development and the setting of the character backgrounds character background expositions serve as sort of the backbone for the episodic kind of like cheesiness and drama that goes on. And there's like a slight comedic thing. I want to say comedic is like 10, 20%. Plus there's like cheesy, like Yuri girls Academy cosplay cafe kind of shenanigans that they add in. That's like around like th- another 30%, uh, 40%. And then the rest of it kind of 40, 50% is sort of the character developments. Like the girl, he may being like, Oh, what what the heck is this girl about? Why is Mitsuki being like so curt and like whatever to me all the time? Like, can I get out of this cosplay cafe? I got it roped into here. Like, why am I in here? Can I can I get out of here? Oh no, like people are finding out that I work at this cosplay cafe, blah blah blah. blah. And I try to handle all of this at the same time. So that's sort of the general balance of these things. Um, as for the overall review, I want to say I think um one th- one flaw I think I would like to point out is that there's too, I think, especially at the beginning, there's too much of the made, there's too much of the, uh, an elaboration of how, like, the Maid Cafe Girls Academy Yuri kind of setting was set up, right? So there's this thing where it's, like, um, the manager of the Maid Cafe is explaining, like, the lore of the Girls Academy and, like, how the, how two girls are, like, bond bound together to become like official like older sister younger sister kind of thing and having all these like german words and i'm like this is like not important <laughs> like this is oh. not important to the story this is oh. not important to the cheesy yuri kind of like snapshot like skits within the anime this is not important to the character development this is not important to anything nobody wants to uh kind of listen to the fake lore inside the girls academy cosplay cafe anime or whatever it is so i thought this like specific part of it was interfering quite heavily with the screen time the story could have given to the more like character development and or maybe a little bit more to like the cheesy yuri skits i think that the cheesy yuri skits were like the characters were so like they'll give screen time to two characters 
a- actually acting out like the Yuri scenes in the cosplay cafe, right? So it's like one of the girls would be like, ah, like the, uh, just like reading her book. And then the, like the other girl will come and be like, when is someone like, what's wrong? And like, you know, they'll act out this like Yuri scene, right? That you'll see in like a manga, like a Yuri manga or like a, um, or like, you know, uh, Sonohana, Sonohana, right? Uh, Sonohana Vito, uh, blah, 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 the, the kiss of the petals or whatever the hell the visual novel name is, right? Um, so they'll act out that scene in the anime and that's cheesy fun. But I would like for the series to just stay with that like general cheesy bent and standard comedy rather than um, elaborating up on this like random Yuri setting that nobody cares about. I think that's not very important in general for the series. I do think that they had the good pacing, a good pacing of bring in terms of like bringing in the characters properly one at a time and kind of being like, oh, this character has uh, this kind of idea and this kind of general personality. And then these are, this is how they interact with the other characters and like bringing in these characters. I think they did a pretty good job with that. Um, but I do think the character and uh, so the character interactions are also kind of like, they're okay, but they're set up to be a bit surreal. So, like, a lot of the characters will kind of overreact. Like, oh, like, why did you do this? Blah, blah, blah. And that's, like, obviously partly for comedic effect and partly to emphasize sort of the dramatic conflict, right? Um, it does wor- work mostly in this instance, but I do think the... the pacing of the character background expositions sometimes gets hampered and becomes haphazard a little bit due to these interactions. So what I mean by that is like um, how do I say this? So it's like a lot of the exposition and like the background for instance for Hime the main character right is that she's always living behind a facade right and part of why she's living behind a facade is because when she was young, you know, when she tried to, um, when her facade was revealed to the other kids, they all like called her a liar and made fun of her and blah, 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 right? So she doesn't want to ever lose her facade. And she also doesn't want to have her facade revealed to others. So that's like part of her shtick. And part of the exposition, part of the story, part of the advancement of the story is kind of dealing with that, um, trauma from before and kind of having the other members of the cast realize her trauma and come to grips with it and kind of help her heal right that's that's going to be an obvious part of the story going forward but because the character interactions are always so surreal like when she's doing something like oh no did i get caught or whatever like how do i do this and then the um the other characters go like huh why do you do that or like, what? This happened? Like, uh, Like, that, because there's these sorts of radical reactions to her saying or doing stuff constantly because, again, the author wants to emphasize the dramatic conflict or wants to um, create a more of a comedic bent, it becomes a little bit harder for the author to then advance um the character trying to resolve her traumatic past in a more realistic way because all the characters outside of her, uh, all all of her friends and all of her acquaintances, all the people in the cast uh, around her are always like, why did you do that? Like just kind of like rejecting this entire like exposition, like beginning of the exposition in the first place. So I thought it was a little bit um, unfortunate because I think her the character backgrounds themselves and how they are formed are pretty decent it's just that i think sometimes when the author is taking the character interaction seriously and wants to resolve slash advance it in a more serious manner the author should have toned down the way the characters interact and made them a little bit more demure made them a little bit more quiet, made them a little bit more realistic instead of being like, oh, you did this? I hate you. I hate you so much. Like, I think that's a little bit, I think that sort of just cuts the ability of the author, again, to be able to reasonably 
untangle this sort of like conflict, this sort of like psychological trauma in a realistic manner. So a little bit unfortunate. I think though, I think that's a little bit uh, another sort of set of flaws that that did rear its head. Um, on that sort of similar subject of being a little bit too cheesy or a little bit too surreal, I think having uh, coincidences. Uh, so a lot of these like characters in the cast are kind of connected to each other by coincidences, or like they kind of meet each other by coincidence, and you know it's like a red string fate kind of thing. Having back to back to back coincidences as cliffhangers is also a little bit cheesy, I think. It's like the first one or two times it happened, it was like, okay, sure. And then like the third time or like the fourth time it happened, it was like, okay, like, sure, I guess. Like, I kind of understand why you're doing it because you want to speed up the pacing, but you you, you didn't have to be this fast. Like, you could have been a little bit slower. You know what I mean? I kind of understand because it's 13 episodes or like, it's just the nature of the manga. But I feel like you could have done a little bit more slowly. Um, although. I do also understand the trap because it's like if you don't speed up that sort of like story, then it becomes like 50 chapters later. <gasps> what? You were the rival all along? It becomes that sort of thing, right? Um, so I, I kind of understand why the author wanted to do a faster pacing instead of a slower pacing. But I do think it could have been slowed down like a little bit, right? And it didn't have to be like back to back to back coincidences. So, um, so that was that. Uh, in general, though, I think the pacing for overall character development was pretty decent. I, character premises and background setups were definitely, um, I think, solid. I think these are premises and types of character personalities and interactions, or not interactions, but character personalities and potential developments that can definitely carry an entire story. So it's quite good. Um, and I, I, I just do like the general um, uh, characters. Characters. I, I, I just, I, I think the world is made pretty much just by having them on the screen and having them bounce properly on the screen. And as long as they don't do anything like super crazy, like the characters and how their backgrounds are set up will pretty much like write themselves, will carry themselves. And I think the author did a good job of writing these initial characters. So I did kind of, I did enjoy watching this quite a bit. And I think if the rest of the episodes, five through 12 or whatever, and obviously the rest of the manga, just kind of write off the, write, not write off the characters, that bad phrasing, but um, write just the characters as they are. Just the characters' personalities, the characters' backgrounds, how would they react? Blah, blah blah. I think if they wrote it like that, I think then it's fine. But the more and more kind of radical interactions, the more like extreme reactions these characters kind of do for the sake of the manga, for the sake of um sort of caricaturistic kind of reactions, for the sake of com comedy, for the sake of emphasizing the drama. The more they do that, I think the more the series kind of falls astray. So I hope it kind of tones it back down a little bit but we'll see but yeah um that was sort of my general kind of overview i had i think it's in pretty good hands um passione obviously not the most trustworthy of studios but i think um i think most of the people are decent enough maybe a little bit inexperienced a little bit greenhorn um but you know, they, they're doing the job decently so far with regards to audiovisuals, especially Iwasaki who, as the character designer. And I think the source material is quite good as long as it doesn't get too extreme. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for Yuri is my job. That's uh, fire. Yes. Is it better than Sakura Kiss? <laughs> Sakura de Trick. Sakura uh, de Trick. Yeah, Sakura Trick. Um, the Yuri better? The Yuri? It's definitely not better. It's like her tricks Yuri was. Bro, like, you can't. You charts. literally can't. Like. <laughs> yeah. It's like her tricks. Like, Sucker Yuri tricks. Is, like, like, Yuri is like. Like, there is nothing that unboxable. has ever come yeah, exactly. close. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's literally it's like, 0 to 100, like, fucking episode 1. 
and then you, it you keeps, know, you know those it like, keeps you, escalating like you know those like cartoon like boxes or whatever where it's like you you spin the um, crank or, or you crank it you, you, the you crank the thing on the side and then it just like it punches you and, like in the face like the boxing glove punches you in the face from the spring like boing like it pops up it's like that <laughs> it's like that current trick it's like like you crank it up like episode one boom it's like the just yeah. hits you in the face <laughs> uh, <laughs> so a big soccer trick is definitely um a little bit more heavy on the yuri to put it lightly so but yeah um if you do like some cheesy yuri like skit interactions without necessarily going full like yuri interactions because i don't think I don't think any of these are full like Yuri interactions so far, unlike uh, something like Citrus or Sakura Chick. Um, it kind of just has like the Yuri like skit kind of scenes as part of the cosplay cafe. But if you have you like that and you like kind of more organic um, character development, more you like more organic character backgrounds and personalities. I won't necessarily say organic development, but um, if you like more organic character backgrounds and stuff like that and setups, uh, please do check this out. This is again Yuri is my job, also known as what's no Yuri wa Oshikoto this. again by Passione, the creator of such famous series such as Harem in the Labyrinth of Another World, <laughs> Interspecies Reviewer Citrus, and Real Wars. So please do check it out if you are interested. <laughs>